What you making DIYers? It's Walker with DIY.life and in this episode I'm going to show you how to scan objects and make 3D models with any smartphone. Recently there's been a ton of advances made in the 3D space with regard to cell phones and using them to make 3D models. And a lot of the newer cell phones have LiDAR technology that actually can scan things in actual 3D. But for this example, we're gonna be using a photo-based 3D modeling app called Reality Scan. Reality Scan is by Epic Games and it uses the Unreal 3D engine. And so to get the app, you're gonna to wanna to download it from the App Store. It's for iPhone, it's for Google, it's for Android. So pretty much any phone you could possibly have. It's uh, compatible, and once, you, once you've downloaded the app, you're going to want to create an Epic Games account, and you're also going to want to create an account on Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a 3D community website where you can upload your 3D models. The app will actually upload it for you for free automatically, and you can go on there and you can make your models visible to the world and downloadable for free, or you can charge for your models and make a little side cash. Everything I'm gonna be showing you today is absolutely free, and all you need is a relatively new smartphone. I was doing this with an iPhone 6, so the app is very stable and it'll work. Now, it was really slow on an iPhone 6, but it worked. I'm now using an iPhone 10, which is technically still a pretty old iPhone, and it works pretty good. Now, if you had a 12, a 13, or even a newer 15, the app will probably work fantastic. For the setup, you're gonna want a nice, clean workspace. You're gonna wanna have lots of lights going on. I've got like six different lights around this object. You're even gonna wanna try and light the object from kind of a down, an upward angle, so that it, it brightens up the bottom, the undersides a little bit. So when you're taking pictures down there, it just doesn't look super dark and black. And that actually leads me to another thought. I was perusing some of the models on Sketchfab and somebody had done a scan of their pizza. And when I flipped the pizza over in 3D, it was all like just, it, they didn't scan the bottom. And obviously it's hard to scan the bottom of a pizza when it's laying on a table. So I had the idea of maybe in the future, maybe my next 3D scanning video, I'll put something on a piece of glass and I'll scan it under the glass, to try to get the bottom side of the object as well. We'll see how that works, so stay tuned for that. In fact, I'm so excited about scanning 3D stuff that I'm probably gonna be making a bunch of videos, so check out my playlist up here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into the Reality Scan app. You can see I had it open and I've scanned this thing already a few times uh, just messing around. So you'll create, you'll create a new scan by hitting the plus button. And so what it's gonna say is it's gonna say, okay, start by taking lots of pictures. And this app, when I first launched it, it started taking, as soon as I hit the button, it started taking picture after picture after picture after picture. It was in auto mode. So you, you might wanna go into the settings and turn it off auto mode because I found it to be kind of annoying. I personally like to be able to just compose the picture and take one at a time. And so we'll take one there and we'll take one there. And you're gonna to wanna to kinda of try and hold your phone steady because if the picture is blurry, it's not really gonna help you out too much. So we'll just walk all the way around this object, getting some establishing photographs. And you can see this object has actually got some kind of, it's got a, a bit of a shine. One thing to keep in mind is it's really difficult to scan shiny or reflective objects. So avoid those if possible. If your object does have reflective surfaces on it, I've actually seen people spray them with canned air. That'll put a, um, like a frozen film over the reflective surface temporarily while you can scan it, and then it'll just kind of like evaporate away and it'll go back to normal. So you can give that a shot as well. And this thing uses an AR 
augmented reality engine and you can see all the pictures that I've taken kind of floating there in space around the object. And once it gets enough pictures of an object to start to figure out what this thing is, you'll see a, a point cloud of the object appear just like that. So now it's starting to see something. And you can see all the pictures that I'm taking are green, which is good. That means the system understands the angles and it can, it can match all of the pictures up in 3D. Now if any of these pictures we take turn red, then we need to go back in and take additional pictures near those red pictures and eventually they'll turn green as well. So we'll just circle our object, take a bunch of pictures, and now we can move. Okay, we got a red one over here. We got two red ones over here, so we're going to need to take a picture here, probably, and maybe here to try and get that red picture to turn green. Let's step back. Yep, we got them to turn green, so now it's happy. Now that I've gotten a decent amount of pictures, I'm up to 33. The thing I'm going to recommend that you do sooner than later is to crop your object. To crop the object, wait, let's fin let this finish analyzing here real quick. See, right now, as we're taking pictures, it's actually looking at... It's looking at the tabletop. It's trying to calculate this gray mat that the stool is sitting on. So we're going to tell it to ignore all of that. So cropping, cropping your scan is going to help it ignore the parts that it doesn't need to, the areas of your model that it doesn't need to be concerned with. And that'll speed up your scanning a little bit if it knows it doesn't even have to think about it. That side. And the, the real important, the tricky one here is the bottom one. You're going to want to bring it up and you're going to want to make it so that it ignores all of those points on the table because we don't, we don't want the table included in our model. So you're going to want to make sure they're, they turn light green. As soon as they turn light green, that means they're out of the scan area. Okay, once, you, once you're happy with the crop, go ahead and hit the crop button. And now it will ignore everything outside that zone. And it should speed things up. Let's move our lights so that we can get a couple shots of the underside here. Okay. Got that one. Let's move this one over here. Now we can get under here. Another thing, if you've got an older phone, you may want to grab a external battery so you don't run out of power during this process because it does take quite a bit of computing power and the phone, it'll chew up battery pretty quickly. So 
just to be safe, I would run an external battery if you have an older phone and you might be concerned about the battery life during your scan. Okay, once you've got it to a point where you've got lots and lots of nice green images and you'll see the point cloud of the object, it's a little off right now, which is what happens sometimes. It's a little odd. Um, sometimes as you take pictures, the point cloud will move and it'll, it'll figure out It'll get a little closer to the model. But once you're happy with you know, all of the pictures you've taken, we're up to 47 now. I would recommend taking about 100 pictures is probably plenty for, for an object like this. But the next thing you're gonna wanna do is preview your model. And to preview your model, you'll just hit the little arrow there and it'll do some cloud computing now that it's got the model previewed, you can go ahead and hit the model button and it'll give you a 3D model preview of the object you're scanning. And you can see here that it struggled with the bottom side of the stool, getting all of the texture details. And if you went back and you took more pictures of the underside of the, of the stool, it would, it would get better better and better, the more pictures you take, the better it gets. And there's a little, there's a funky little bit. Here on the, the foot of the stool, I'm not going to worry about that. In fact, I would save that for cleanup in something like Blender or 3D Studio Max. Now that you've got your, here, let's reset the view. Now that you've got your stool, looking good. The next thing to do is you simply hit the continue button, you title your model, and I recommend using a keyword rich title, something like uh, rustic wooden step stool. And give it a description. Okay, done. Now what you do is you hit process and share and it'll process it, it'll send it to your Sketchfab account and it'll show up as a model on your Sketchfab page. Once your model shows up on your Sketchfab page, you can go into the settings for the model and you can set the visibility of your model to public if you like, the whole world to see your model. You can set it to downloadable if you want everybody to be able to download the model or you can set a price and you can sell it. Now, Sketchfab is a community, is what Sketchfab is trying to do is it's trying to create a 3D uh, community. So they really wanna encourage users to upload models and meshes for free and make them available for anybody to download. So if you upload a model into Sketchfab and make it downloadable for free, then Sketchfab will reward you by giving you a couple of more upload credits. And I think with the free plan, you get like, I don't know, 10 or 12 uploads per month or something like that. So I just uploaded this one and it gave me another upload credit. If you wanna sell models on Sketchfab, you're probably gonna at some point have to buy some more credits, which you can do there. But you can also clean up your models once they're in Sketchfab. So you can download, I like to download the FBX version of your model. That way I can open it up in like Blender or 3D Studio Max. And it'll also include the texture map of your model as well. So if the texture map looks a little dark, it's got weird areas, you wanna go in and use a program like Photoshop or GIMP to fix the texture map. You can just make those adjustments to the image, save it, as the same, you know, just save it, keeping the same file name and everything. And then you can go in if you need to make some cleanups. If you need to clean up the model a little bit, you saw like that one spot by the foot where it was catching a little bit of the, the mat, you can go in there and delete those vertices. Um, you can fix any weirdness that's going on. And you can then save off you can export the model out of Blender or 3D Studio Max as a FBX object. You zip the texture map 
along with the new FBX object. And then you can go into the model settings and you can replace the model right here in Sketchfab. It'll upload, it'll process, and then it'll show you the new, new it'll show you the old version and it'll show you the new version, which is kind of nice, side by side. So you can look at both of them and then it'll ask you, do you really want to replace this model? And if you like the new one better, you just say yes and then it swaps it out. It's quite easy and it's very convenient and pretty, pretty, pretty fun stuff. That is about all I have for this episode. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments about scanning objects and turning them into 3D models, please leave them in the comments below. And we, well, we'll see you next time. Yet at least. <laughs>